So in today's video, for all our contents of all things AM5 and Ryzen 7000 series, we have something of a little of a legend. Uh, right? uh, it's the steel legend. Hello everybody, I'm Han, we are Studio ASIO, and today we'll be having a look at the ASRock X670E Steel Legend motherboard. And let's start off with the aesthetic of this motherboard. Now, the motherboard's aesthetic, it has a silvery accent throughout this motherboard, which should allow it to suit black and white build very nicely. It also has this urban camouflage kind of aesthetic glittered throughout the whole motherboard, which has been a mainstay since the B450 series of the Steel Legend when it was first introduced. So continuing from the aesthetic of this board, the board does indeed have built-in RGB as well on the board, with the first one being at the around underneath the chipset area, and the second one being underneath the M.2 armor area below here. We can B-roll that in. Now let's move back on to the CPU area of this board and again, of course, AM5 socket compatible with AM4 coolers as well. And let's talk about the VRM on this board. So the Steel Legend will be utilizing a 16 plus 2 plus 1 power stage all rated at 60 amp each with 16 of them being for the V-Core phases, 2 of them being for SOC phase and 1 of them being for the VDD MISC phase. Now the Steel Legend will also have 8 layer PCB with 2 ounce of copper. All this is to ensure better signal traces, to ensure for better system stability and efficiency as well. So you can be quite sure that you can slot in the Ryzen 9 7950X and this board will run it without a hitch. Now moving on to the side of the CPU area, which is the memory. The Steel Legend has 4 DIMM slots and can support an upwards maximum of 128 gigs of memory, which is 432 gigs of RAM. And it also can support memory overclocks of speeds of up to 6600 MHz. And it does indeed support the new AMD RAM standards as well, which is Expo. And it also will support XMP as well for RAM kits without Expo certification, but has overclocking capability as well. A noteworthy addition that the Steel Legend has is that it does indeed support ECC memory, ECC DDR5 memory. So for anyone that's uh, looking for more stability in their system or perhaps you want to turn your home PC into a mini server at home, this might be the board to consider due to the ECC RAM support. Now moving on to the storage options for this board, you will get 4 M.2 with the top primary slot being a PCIe Gen 5 NVMe slot that ASRock calls it the Blazing M.2 which will have their incorporated XXL M.2 heatsink which they've named and then you also get 3 more PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots which are here and here and here so the bottom 2 slots over here will be covered by a heatsink and the, tops, the middle slot over here won't have a heatsink other than M.2 storages, you of course have will have the older SATA port standard but however, unlike most ATX board you only get 4 SATA slots as opposed to 6 but this may be due to the extra USB that you will be getting with this motherboard which we will be showing next Moving on from that, let's talk about the bottom part of this motherboard and that is the PCIe slots and for that, you get 3 PCIe slots on this motherboard with 2 of them being X16 physically and 1 of them being X1 physically Now let's talk about the top slot or main slot over here first and for that, this slot will be running on PCIe Gen 5 and it will be running on X16 bandwidth as well so you won't have to worry for any new upcoming graphic card that we'll be releasing even if they come out with PCIe Gen 5 Bottom slot over here runs on PCIe Gen 3, but it does run on X4 electrically only. However, a noteworthy thing to say is that this PCIe slot is directly connected to your CPU instead of your chipset. So if you do decide to add on like something like an audio card or maybe a recorder card, you will have better latency than if it's going to the chipset. And because of this configuration that ASRock decided to go for, which is PCI Gen 5 X16 and 3 X4 down here, the top slot will always run on PCIe Gen 5 X16, 
even if you plug something down here, instead of splitting its bandwidth becoming X8 and X8, even if you have a audio card down here, this will still run on PCIe Gen 5 X16. And of course, you have a PCIe uh, one times physical and electrical for maybe a Wi-Fi card if you decide to go for that. Next, we'll be talking about the rear I.O. of this motherboard. And starting off, let's start with the top, which are the two display output for this motherboard. And you have one HDMI 2.1, as well as a DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC or Data Stream Compression. Now, what this means is that both of these does indeed support 4K of up to 120Hz with the integrated graphic of Ryzen 7000. Other than that, you'll also be getting a BIOS flashback button over here, which allows you to update your BIOS if the new generation of Ryzen processor comes out and you don't have the previous generation. Very nice to see here for all the motherboards that will be supporting the newer generation. Let's jump and talk about the USB ports on this motherboard now. And can I just say, I love having this many USB Type-A ports. But let's start off with the USB Type-C, which is a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 for transfer speeds of up to 20 gigabits per second. Then you'll also have one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port right next to the Type-C port, six more USB 3.2 Gen 1, and four more USB 2.0. With these many USB ports, surely content creators or even video streamers will appreciate these, as confirmed by our video editors over here, as he does love having a lot of USB ports. Yes, we like it. Afterwards, we'll move to the LAN port, which is right beside the USB port, with the blue one being a 2.5 gigabit LAN port, with it being controlled by the Realtek 8125, and the grey one will be a 1 gigabit LAN port controlled by the Realtek 8111 chipset. And for wireless connectivity, you'll be covered by the Steel Legend as well, as it does have the newer Wi-Fi standard of Wi-Fi 6E to allow it to connect to the newer 6 GHz Wi-Fi standards, and built-in Bluetooth together as well. And next up for audio, you'll be getting one 3.5mm line-out jack and one 3.5mm mic jack both of which are gold-plated, so that's always very nice to see. As well as a SPDIF out, which is optical out, which is great for anyone that is using an older sound setup. And all this will be controlled by the Realtek ALC1220 with 7.1 surround sound HD audio support. However, do take note, you will be missing some 3.5mm jack, such as the line-in or C-slash-sub, if you ever need to use these 3.5mm jacks. Now let's move on to the pins and headers for the Steel Legend. The Steel Legend has two 8-pin or 4 plus 4 pin CPU connectors with 6 fan headers with 5 of them written to support AIO pumps as well. So you don't really have to purposely hunt for one that can support AIO pumps. And for ARGB and RGB headers, you'll be getting 3 ARGB headers and 1 RGB header, which is a layout that I personally prefer as most newer fans or AIO nowadays will be using ARGB instead of RGB. Two of the RGB will be at the top right of the board, while one more will be at the bottom left of the board, along with the RGB header. Other than the ARGB or RGB headers, you'll also be getting a front panel USB 3.2 Type-C Gen 2x2, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 for the front panel, so this allows you to have up to four USB 3.2 for your casing, if your casing has that many USB 3.2 and two USB 2.0 You'll also be getting a Thunderbolt connector a clear CMOS header and a header for speakers that goes beep when you turn on your PC as well as front panel connectors Now before we end this video we'll go through some of the things that's included with a Steel Legend that's not on the board but comes together with every purchase of it. And the first one being the Wi-Fi antenna for your Wi-Fi 6E capable motherboard, of course. And the next one is a noteworthy mention is a graphic card stand from ASRock. So this one attaches uh, to the bottom right of your motherboard, which will help you to hold the graphic cards of yours like a GPU holder. So it's very nice to see because I'm guessing the next generation of graphic card will be quite heavy if anything were to go by. 
Now, who do we think this motherboard is for? Well, it's certainly for someone who's looking for more aesthetic or a more rugged look on their board, some a bit more RGB here and there. Or it could be for someone who's looking to get into getting a Ryzen 9, but won't be doing any extreme overclocking on it. This board will certainly be able to handle that. Or it could be for someone who's looking to build a mini server grade uh, PC at their home, as it does support ECC memory. Or it's for could be for a video editor or video streamer who requires this amount of ports on their N.2 and USB at the back as well. Certainly a board that can do quite a lot of things. And before we go, a special thanks to ASRock Malaysia for providing us to have a look at the XX70E Steel Legend board. Certainly a board with a lot of functionality and features while not being too expensive and will be able to suit a lot of builds that require a lot of RGB pop. A very nice mix of performance and pricing for the board. And that's all from us from Studio Azio. Do remember to like and share this video to your friends and family as well as follow us and subscribe to us on our respective social medias. We'll see you again next time. Goodbye everybody and stay safe.